Hello everyone, my name is Tricky Wee, but you can call me Tricky, and welcome back to another spooky topic video. This was a series that I made a while back, but I never actually uploaded it to my own channel, and I didn't want you guys to miss out, so here it is. This is the most hostile Pokemon from the Kanto region. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos so you don't miss out on the Johto, Hoenn, and all that other good old stuff. This is old audio, so we can make fun of me together. Let's do it. As you read from the title, our video today is the top 10 most hostile Pokemon from the Kanto region. Oh Christ on the bike, why do I talk like that? And just so you guys know, I am going to be judging the Pokemon by its Pokedex entry because we pretty much know that any Pokemon can potentially be dangerous and destroy your face. You may or may not agree with this list, so be sure to list your personal opinions in the comments below. We would love to see what you guys have to say. So do it. Well, with all that out the way, let's go ahead and get started with our honorable mentions. First, we have Tauros. These guys could get pretty violent, but fortunately they have a lovely anger outlet. They smash their faces into trees until they feel better. I do that often. Next is Jolteon. It's very, very cute, but it's very, very sensitive, and if you make it mad or nervous, it will send 10,000 volts of electricity through you. That would not feel good. Then there's Rhydon, but this Pokemon is honestly way too smart to actually start a rampage and not be able to stop. Then there's Charmeleon, but this guy just likes to pout a lot. I would say Charizard. This Pokemon is indeed very dangerous, but its Pokedex entry says that it would never attack anybody who is weaker than it. He's nice. And then there's Ditto. And technically Ditto could even be number one because it could transform to anything. Plot twist. To keep it more interesting, think about how these Pokemon would respond if they were real. So enough of that, let's move on to number 10. Taking our number 10 spot is Electrode. At first glance, this Pokemon doesn't even look slightly intimidating at all. I mean, it's a ball with eyebrows, it doesn't really look that freaky. But this Pokemon is indeed very, very dangerous. Its Pokedex entry is this. It is dangerous. If it has too much electricity and has nothing to do, it amuses itself by exploding. Okay. So being around this Pokemon would not be a very good idea. It might think it would be a lovely time to randomly explode. Then he'll smile about it afterwards. That's not nice. Moving on to number 9, we have Scyther. Scyther has two large blades for hands. Plus it has a little bit of an attitude problem. That is not a good combination. This Pokemon is kind of a show-off. It's pretty proud of its speed, and the faster it goes, the more deadly its blades become. I don't know if this is canon or not, but in the first season of the Pokemon show, there's an episode where a Scyther completely goes savage whenever it sees red. It violently attacked anything it saw that was coated in red, and when red was poured on his trainer, he tried to kill him too. Something with arm blades should not have a violent temper like that. That is not safe. If you're wearing a red shirt around a Scyther, you're probably gonna die. And because of its high speed, you probably can't run away from it either. And being chopped up would definitely suck. Moving on to number eight, we have Blastoise. Out of the Kanto starter evolutions, this Pokemon is probably the most brutal out of all of them. Blastoise has a naturally hostile nature, and it has really creative ways of carrying out violence. It could either crush its victim with its very heavy weight, or shoot you with its water cannons. A lot of people underestimate how powerful water can actually be. If it's powerful enough and it shoots you, it could take the skin right off your bones. That ain't cool. Not to mention Blastoise has a mega evolution, which makes it even more strong. The water that shoots from the cannons are easily able to pierce steel. It's really strange to think that Blastoise could be more violent than a Charizard, but then again Blastoise can destroy one in two seconds, so do not take this Pokemon lightly. Moving on to number seven, we have Beedrill. Beedrill is a giant freaking bee. Bees are hostile to begin with, but Beedrill is a giant poisonous bee wasp hybrid thing with sharp stingers for hands. Comparing a normal bee with Beedrill actually upsets me a little bit. A lot of people wish that Pokemon were real. I'm one of those people. But just thinking of the dangers that comes with the magic can be really scary to think about. One Beedrill is scary enough, but a colony of Beedrill. That's a big cup of nope. Not only that, they are extremely territorial. If you accidentally put your foot too close to an area that a colony of Beedrill happened to claim already, they won't question you. They'll just chase you until you magically get away, or they sting you to death. Considering every sting is poisonous, it's not a lovely thought at all. Plus, it could probably just stab you with those things anyway, so that couldn't be pleasant. They don't stop either. According to its Pokedex entry, it'll jab its enemy repeatedly. That's pretty violent and extremely terrifying. I don't like it. Taking our number six spot is Arbuck. 
According to its Pokedex entry, Arbok is known for being very vengeful. Now think of this, a giant cobra with poison that can melt through steel? chasing you forever until you die. Seems like a pleasant afternoon. And obviously when it's angry it'll be violent, but even when it's scared it'll be violent as well. If you scare an Arbuck, it'll come get you and squeeze you and probably eat you. Nah, I don't really know, but I'm sure that it would not be pleasant. And I wanted to mention one more thing. It uses the patterns on its belly to intimidate the foe. And it also says that Arbucks from different regions have different patterns. And in the Pokemon Adventures novel, Arbucks with different patterns possess a different ability. I really think they should make this a game mechanic as well, just like Vivian. We could collect Arbucks from every country and have a giant violent snake war. Taking our number 5 spot, we have Pinsir. This Pokemon just looks violent. Its design is honestly honestly really scary looking. But in any case, this Pokemon is far from friendly. It grips prey with its pincers until the prey is torn in half. If it fails to crush, it will swing around and toss the opponent. Dude. And not only that, look at its mouth. Its mouth looks like a death trap in my opinion. There's so many freaky bug types in Kanto region. If Pokemon were real, these things would probably be chilling in your backyard. So make sure you have a lot of fire. Or a gun. Not only that, whenever it mega evolves, it has wings. And look how inviting those pincers are. Anything with a violent nature should not have something that sharp. Moving on to number 4, we have Haunter. While its beautiful evolution likes to pretend to be people's shadows just for kicks, Haunter will stalk anything it sees until it gets the chance to kill them. This Pokemon is extremely dangerous, and that kind of makes me sad because I really like Haunter, and I think its design is slightly adorable. But thinking about being stalked by a Haunter until I'm dead? Nah. On top of that, its tongue is made out of poisonous gas. If it licks any living creature, they will start shaking violently until they die. This is an actual in-game Pokedex entry. What the freaking crap, Game Freak? It's hard to believe that Pokemon is a children's game sometimes. That's so dark. So despite that giant smile, this Pokemon is really mean. I like the uncannon Haunter better. The Haunters from the show are so much nicer. Moving on to number three, we have Nidoking. You don't even have to read its Pokedex entry. You could just look at its face and know that it it is a violent Pokemon. Once this Pokemon goes on a rampage, there's no stopping it. If it binds an enemy with its tail, it could snap the victim's spine quite easily. Dude. That's a little harsh. You would really have to watch out for that tail. Apparently, according to its Ruby and Sapphire Pokedex entry, it could topple a metal transmission tower with one swing of its tail. And not only is its tail extremely powerful, this thing is poisonous. If this Pokemon was chasing you, you would have to worry about either being stabbed by its poisonous horn or shot with one of the many elemental attacks that it could learn. Nidoking is capable of learning ice, electricity, fire, and all kinds of different kind of moves. So, imagining a rampage in Nidoking in real life is a very scary thought. If Pokemon were real, they would probably be the dominant species to be completely honest. But then again, Nidoking is only 4'7 in height. I'm taller than a Nidoking. I don't agree with this. Nidoking is actually 50 feet tall, and that's what we're gonna be sticking with forever. Moving on to our number two spot, we have Gyarados. Well, obviously this Pokemon is not about the cuddles. According to its Pokedex entry, it is extremely vicious and horribly brutal. It has enough destructive power to totally annihilate even a major city. Sounds like a nice guy. So on top of it being a terror to the ocean, this Pokemon can also fly. I mean, it cannot learn the HM fly, which I think is stupid, but it still possesses the flying typing. Plus, we see it hovering in every 3D game that it's in. And then there's Mega Gyarados. The result leads to the end of the world. Gyarados is so brutal that even its Mega Evolution finally earned the dark typing. That's exactly why we need a Pokemon who can Mega Evolve into a Water and Fairy type to give Gyarados some competition. Please? So anyway, the amount of power is unreal and power can be scary. But that doesn't change how awesome Gyarados really is. I love this Pokemon. Now before I reveal the most hostile Pokemon in Kanto, don't forget to tell us what Pokemon you think is the most dangerous, or hostile, or hostile, however you prefer to say it. Also, vote for the next countdown in the comments below. Okie dokie, enough styling. So, taking our number one spot is Mewtwo. This one was pretty much a no-brainer. Due to repeated experiments and its genetic code being messed around with too long, this Pokemon turned vicious. I actually feel really sorry for it. Its Pokedex entry even says that it has the most savage heart among Pokemon. 
people are misunderstood in YouTube. Like I said earlier, power is scary. This dude already sees itself as a god among people and Pokemon, and it will not hesitate to put others in danger to get what it wants. We have seen this in the first Pokemon movie too. Spoilers! Mewtwo wanted to destroy the world with a giant storm, clone the most powerful Pokemon he could find, then kill all the humans. Plus, he wanted to kill any Pokemon who had a trainer. What the crap, man? Even though this was a kid movie, it had some pretty dark scenes that a lot of people look over. Mewtwo went psycho and destroyed the people who created him, and it even stared into the eyes of the scientist dude as he blew up the lab. Mewtwo is so mean! So yeah, that could completes today's countdown. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I'm really excited to share more of them with you guys. Don't forget to comment and leave a like. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye!